In this episode, we experienced many different phases of the Pacific Ocean, the biggest ocean on the world and our toughest crossing. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart. And here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33-foot silver tranquility. In the last episode we explore Isabella and enjoy a snorkel tour, but we face an unpleasant surprise just before our Pacific crossing. Last night we had to start the engine at 9.30 and um, we did not shut it off, so uh, no wind. That's a bummer, but the swell is less choppy than yesterday and that's a good thing because that really exhausts you. Um, still a little bit cloudy but I see the sun coming through. And um, yeah, the night shift was okay. Nothing really, um, nothing happened luckily. And now uh, getting into the rhythm. Most of us know the Earth from this side. We already crossed the Atlantic Ocean, but now we are on the Pacific Ocean. It is the largest ocean on the planet. If you look at it, it looks like there is nothing but blue. But if we zoom in, you see it is scattered with islands. From Galapagos to Marquesas, we have to cover 3,100 nautical miles. That is more than our Atlantic crossing, which was 2,840 nautical miles. That one took us 26 days, and this time we hope we can do it in less days. Without the Finsulate anti-fouling, we are faster, so our weather routing says it is possible. But we have to see if the wind and current are in our favor. First, we have to pass the doldrums, also known as the Intertropical Convergence Zone. An area with no wind, lots of thunderclouds and rain. The ocean is a mirror, a reflection of the sky. We have a full diesel tank and 100 liter extra with us. So we can use the engine the coming days. But we hope we won't stay in this area for too long. We head south to get to the trade winds. It will probably take us two days on the engine. It's day two and um, we had to refill our diesel today. So we have used, or we still have 76% left, so we still can use our engine, which is good and we expect to be sailing tomorrow morning. Um, but just when we filled up, we could seal. So, but that only lasts for one hour. So yeah. Calculated in the during midday is still going on. We are going with the engine, but with some wind. It says 7.6 knots, but with the wind from the back, 
so that's too little to sail so that's why we use the engine but then in this morning in my shift we will go upwind a little bit more and then we can start sailing and then we start sailing and then the wind drops a bit again so it says use the engine again and that's gonna be the final engine hours because then the wind kicks in we go more south again and with that angle we can sail south in good speeds uh, with good amount of wind and good amount means uh, 9 10 knots and gust up to 30 so that's very good for a beam 30? reach 13, 13. 13. 13 so that's very good for a beam reach angle that means we're going above 5 all the time so yeah and then we are really in the wind in the trade winds and then when the current comes back in as well the weather routing says and now we turn to the Marquesas and then we're going fast well, <laughs> no. uh, just a little insight in our evening routine um, after we've put Liz to bed we get a cup of tea and uh, do some weather routing post an update on our tracker uh, send some messages to uh, fellow cruisers and yeah just discuss the plan for the night and uh, have a little uh, sweet <laughs> especially here in the doldrums uh, it's known for squalls so what you can see on the radar are squalls uh, little rain clouds that can become very big or these are quite small and that's because here in the doldrums it's so hot so close to the equator that there's a lot of uh, sun heating up the seawater and these uh, squalls they form out of nowhere so you can see them actually forming in front of you or behind you around you and um, yeah, they might carry some wind they also can carry some thunder and uh, that's not the case right now but I would like to stay dry so I'm trying to maneuver uh, in between the squalls so we track them on the radar see if they move and uh, we see if we alter course if I can go in between them and he did we did not encounter a squall that night and we stayed dry we have found wind we have found wind yes we have wind and we see another sailboat our friends from Amai uh, are really close by so we will probably reach them within a few hours to say uh, hi face to face Goodbye. that's always uh, a nice thing or really special because the ocean is so big and then you meet another boat that's cool really really cool <laughs> Did we get from our Swiss friends? <laughs> Swiss chocolate? Well, 
Swiss chocolate, but I put it in the, in the fridge because that will melt instant with the sun. And uh, some uh, a snack and uh, chupa chup. Wow. So that's Lisa's favorite. That's so sweet. How special and cool to meet our friends on the middle of the Pacific Ocean and receive treats from them with Easter. So kind and sweet. Mixed, uh, mixed feelings. Uh, we had this nice encounter with uh, Ame on the ocean, but now we're sailing and we see that we sail away from them. Uh, we have the same course. It would be nice to stay well, a little bit close to each other, but it looks like that we are faster. So that's the mixed feelings. It's nice to have them a little bit closer. Um, but also, <laughs> you know that we like uh, speed and, uh, and make competition out of everything. So it also feels like, oh, yes, our 33 footer does it again. Sails away from a bigger boat. They have a Hubble Rossi 35 too. Um, but yeah, it would also be nice if they could stay uh, a little bit closer uh, to us. But maybe uh, if we go dead downwind in the upcoming days, they will uh, be the better boat by then and, uh, and catch up with us again. Seven o'clock in the evening, and there's this big bright light on the horizon. So it could be the moon, but it is something different. These are the, well, the non-popular <laughs> big Chinese fishing vessels, fishing factories on the ocean. Um, this one is uh, 56 meters in length. I think they can be become bigger but it's uh, yeah, it's like a factory on the ocean they're fishing and stuffing everything and processing everything on that boat so it might just be a, a normal fishing vessel uh, where all our canned tuna is from and if they have skipjack tuna that's fine but who knows who knows Five 
a day full of speed and a comfortable ocean as it seemed but not everything is as it seems there is this squeaky sound in the mast that is bothering and worrying us and as comfortable as it now is we will pretty soon face a completely different face of the pacific ocean Bart is has been busy all day to kind of sort out where the, where the noise is coming from, but we can't locate it. It's in the mast and um, he's really, really worried. And then the hardest part is that, of course, he doesn't want to worry me, so then he's not telling, but yeah, these are always, um, they, these are downsides on, uh, on a boat and especially when you are out on the ocean. On the ocean. Oh yeah, there's this uh, this sound in the in the mast that's been bothering us since this morning, and it was there all of a sudden, and you start questioning everything. What's it gonna be? We thought it was the the boom because that's a very normal squeaking uh, around the attachment to the mast, but we sprayed everything and no. It didn't disappear um, and I was thinking about it the entire day it goes into your head you're thinking about uh, stays are the stays moving somewhere and making this sound and is it a warning for problem but now I'm, I'm pretty sure I got it and I think it's the, the Genoa halyard that's under pretty much tension and it's uh, going into the mast uh, through a block and every time the Genoa gets a bit more power from the wind, I hear the chirping and I feel it in the line of the of the Genoa halyard. So that must be the must be the problem. And that's not a problem really. That's just uh, yeah, a noise. A noise. Yeah. So hopefully tomorrow uh, we can fix it. Maybe we put off some tension of the line, uh, spray some uh, some lube. And, uh, and tighten the halyard again. And all of a sudden we have, we are encountering a squall. It was just, we had 12 knots of breeze and wow, 18. But we are double reefed already, so uh, that's okay. And I just um, put on the radar to monitor where this is heading to, but it's a big one. And it's keeping in position, so it's not really moving. Nobody's fan of squalls, neither am I. It's uh, always the least pleasant part of the sailing uh, trip. It's the second one in half an hour, and this one is uh, hitting us. So we have some rain, so I'm going to put in the cushions, get the cushions inside. Um, and now it's raining really hard and the wind died down, no wind. What a night, what a night. So after the schools, now the wind is increasing and the waves are like slamming in and some waves get in on the spray hood. And now Maple Gate is crossing us really, really closely. And I just contacted them an hour ago on VHF and what they would do if they would go in front of my bow or my stern and they told me uh, bow but with enough clearance but two not canals feels so small on the ocean so not a not a nice night shift uh, i haven't had those anxious yeah i get a little bit anxious and tense by uh, all these events even though i know what to do it's not that it's just full of adrenaline 
That is what it is. And I don't want to wake up Bart because he needs his sleep and he's sleeping really bad because the ocean is so rough. So. Some nights are just uh, worse. Not, not really, really nice. Okay, the cargo vessel passed us by, but only with 1.8 nautical miles uh, distance. So that's uh, really close. morning. It was a rough, rough night with the wind and the squalls and then this cargo vessel and the motion of the ocean with the waves slamming in all. So not the best night I ever had um, for Bart either, but he, in it, during his shift, the wind dropped to 10 knots so he could get some sleep in the cockpit. So that's good. And now he's resting as well. And the wind's picking up again. Never a dull moment. In the episode, in the episode. And I go to episode. Now the school, number six. Mama. No, four. Mama, but I can say my mom to Miss Day. That can make sense so much from the day to Bechala. Oh yeah. The squeaky sound is still not gone and Bart is still investigating the cause of this noise. Okay, this is squall number five. I think it will be a squally day. <laughs> a day full of squalls because um, everywhere we look, only behind us there is blue sky and in front of us it's, it's, it's completely grey. Double reefed again. It's a happy day, day five, happy day. Hello, I sit in the nice yet. We are today next and then we go. Lizard solutions for waves smashing in the cockpit. <laughs> Before you know it, the squalls are gone and we have a clear sky again. So. We still sometimes have that uh, squeaking sound of the uh, Genoa halyard and uh, it, it doesn't feel right to me. So um, I've got this hypothesis, what, what if, what if the, the forestay is broken in the top of the mast and the mast is not falling down because of the um, Genoa and uh, Genoa Halyard because it's holding it in place. So I'm uh, gonna hoist a GoPro in the mast and, uh, and check if everything still is uh, is right there, just for good sake. I'm looking at the uh, at the GoPro footage. Um, the positive thing is that we could film and get everything in picture. Um, yeah, it, it, it looks intact, so... That's a relief. So, and we are changing course. Uh, so we can fold out our two head sails. So go on with the uh, beam reeds. Uh, course, close hold course.
comfortable Sue is waiting for us, but for how long will it last? In the next episode, we will face more challenges. Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all. Thank you.